We're all different in so many ways. Some are sparks, some are fiery blaze. We are one. We are one. Some express as they dance on the stage. Some express putting pencil to page. We are one. We are one. We are born to this life. We are free, living spirit in humanity. We are one. One spirit. Present peace, one perfect being, being every living thing, the one and only truth, one power, one hope. We are a cosmic kaleidoscope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See that man who's asleep on the street. Broken skin on the soles of his feet We are one We are one See that girl in the Mercedes Benz Beauty money surrounded by friends We are one We are one We're all made of this powerful stuff We are beauty, we're more than enough We are one One spirit, one mind, one God, one ever-present peace one perfect being, being every living thing. One and only truth, one power, one hope. We are a cosmic kaleidoscope. We are one with the earth and the moon. We are one with the blue-nosed baboon. We are one. We are one. We are separate drops in one sea. We're a leaf in a jungle of trees. We are one. We are one. We're the spark that's creating the flame. We are perfect. We're one and the same. We are one. One spirit, one mind, one God, one ever present peace. One perfect being, being. One and only truth, one power, one hope We are a cosmic kaleidoscope We are a cosmic kaleidoscope We are a cosmic kaleidoscope Oh, 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 oh to myself in this place of knowing, truly knowing that God is all there is in and through all things as all things, that it is divine intelligence manifesting of itself in infinite ways. Everything that is, everything that was, everything that will be is of this manifestation. And I know for myself that I am a unique, individualized expression of spirit. That right where I am, all of God is, that I live in this field of infinite possibilities. And as I know this for myself, I know this for each and every person that is hearing this word, that each is a unique individualized expression of the one. Having a human experience as a divine being. And from this place of knowing, I speak a word for our service today. I know that it unfolds perfectly. I also know that somewhere between the prayer, the music and the message, that each of us 
are moved into a greater, deeper understanding of our own divine truth. So just knowing this, it fills my heart with joy and gratitude. And I'm able to release this word into the aspect of God that we call spiritual law, which all things are manifested. And from this place of gratitude, I release this word and I let it be so. And so it is. Hello, my name is Don Coburn, a practitioner emeritus from our beloved center. And here is today's affirmation from our Prayers of Wisdom and Vision book of prayers. We are created from love and filled with it. There is nothing outside this immeasurable love. The natural byproduct of love is peace. As we love, peace simply comes to us all. And so it is. Hello, I am Edward Fulion, the spiritual leader of Centers for Spiritual Living. I bring to you a moment of peace for our nation and our world from the writings of our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes. Peace is the power at the heart of God. My peace is found at the heart of God. And the heart of God, for me, is found at the very center of my being. It does not matter how closely the confusion of the outer world presses against me. I am not even disturbed by the confusion in my immediate environment. I know that the only way to counteract confusion is to bring peace into play. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. These words of assurance stay with me, and I hear them re-echoing in the depths of my being. I surrender all my fears, even those nameless fears which have beset me for such a long time dulling my pleasure and clouding me with apprehension. I am now through with fear. What indeed is there for a divine and immortal being to fear? Certainly not people. For as I am divine and immortal, so is every person, and every person is my sibling. I recognize one life principle, working in and through and inspiring my motives and the motives of everyone I contact and the motives of everyone who come into my thought atmosphere. I add that to the meditation. So I fear nothing because the eternal and perfect life principle is animating not only my body, but my affairs. There is nothing for me to fear, for I am an inseparable part of the divine. And, and then he uses some words from the scripture, and I'm going to globalize them here so that they can be used in any faith tradition. In the divine, I live and move and have my being, and its perfect peace is mine. My peace is found at the heart of the divine. I invite you now to take a moment with me to be still and to let your thoughts center 
on peace, wherever you may be. And think perhaps of this last phrase in the meditation, my peace is found at the heart of God, repeating it to yourself until you feel its warmth and assurance. My peace is found at the heart of God, and the heart of God for me is at the very center of my being. My voice it soars, but will I speak up? My eyes do see, but will I look? These boots do walk, but will they show up? Gotta give up my people, please, and wait, shed the lies of yesterday. Yeah, these hands are strong, but will they break through? The swell laid walls of doubt and shame. My heart's been drenched in brick and mortar But I brought the wall into the world and I can tear it down So watch out, I am, I am Don't we hide in, I'm through messing around Wake up, wake up Time has come for me to know it, own it, love it, speak it, show it heart won't be contained and I can hear the faintest whisper rumbling, rising, thumping, driving while my soul it gotta sing so watch out I am, I am don't we hide in I'm through stumbling around wake up, wake up time has come for me to know it only love it, speak it, show Playing hide and seek with all my secret dreams. I can keep him locked inside of me, or I can choose to live them out. I can choose to live unstoppable. I am, I am. Whatever I say, I am. I'm through stumbling around. Wake up, wake up, time has come for me to wake up, wake up, better believe I'm gonna wake up, wake up, time has come for me to know it, only love it, speak it, show it, want it, take it, work it, say it, do it, believe it, live it, think it, see it, be it, unstoppable. <laughs> Hello everyone, um, I'd like to introduce you to a new member of our family. Of course, some of you will know Cooper. He is 13 years old, I believe, and he's finally making friends with someone who is 13 weeks old. And this is our Quentin. Quentin um, was rescued from the south and um, from a kill shelter and driven across the nation by volunteers to bring him to our home and he is um, settling in beautifully making his way into the family and he's learning how to manage some of his instincts like this biting is not something that you should allow for a little dog so he's learning to leave it leave it and so typically I'd give him a treat right there. Now I'm introducing him to you because wouldn't you know that the way I was raised to train dogs, it turns out is all wrong. Oh, don't mind Cooper. He, he's got a little thing with his throat that, that we're taking care of. So if he coughs, there's nothing wrong with him. But wouldn't you know that what I learned about training dogs was all wrong. When I grew up, the approach to training 
dogs was a little bit aggressive and you yelled at dogs and punished them and even in house cleaning you would house house training you would uh, do things that it turns out are counterproductive Kevin and I have been studying how to give this beautiful dog his best chance at having a right relationship, a good relationship with humans. And the first thing we learned is that you have to be affirmative. If he has an accident in the house, or if he bites something according to his nature, it is never his fault. Take that in for a moment. It's up to us to communicate to him in an affirmative way so that he knows what to do and how to do it. Now, you know, I, if, you're, if you're a student of metaphysics, like I know you are if you're watching this, surely this must make you think about what we call the universe, that creative field that we call mind, the divine, and how we say sometimes it is always for you, it is always affirmative, oh, wow, I had a really deep thought about that and about how sometimes I forget that. And I want it to be true. I want life to be for me. And yet I get into playing with us and them, right and wrong, pushback, indignation, anger, all of the things that are showing up in the world right now. You know, right now in our world, there is a lot to take in, a lot to be worried about, a lot to be bothered about. And, um, you know, I've had people talk to me about the anger they're feeling and the, um, the frustration and the fear they're feeling. And I had one lady um, write to me on Instagram saying how disappointed she was that I was advocating peace. That's big for us. That's the struggle for us. Is this the time for me to abandon my faith tradition and succumb to anger or frustration. I can acknowledge that it's difficult, but you see, for me, that's why I became the religious scientist. Now, I acknowledge, and our topic today is grounding in the past so that we can blossom in the future. As you heard our guest speaker say last week, what is the point if we're standing on the shoulders of giants if we don't carry it out into the future? Well, here's the thing. When I learned metaphysics, like when I learned how to train a dog, I learned it at the level of my consciousness at that time. So things are different now. Don't you know when things are good in the world and politicians are behaving themselves and spouses and dogs are behaving themselves, then it's easy to affirm oneness and see the silver lining and see the good and praise it. It's when things are not working so well that it requires a more purposeful, mindful, mature response. So in the beginning of my metaphysics, I, I must admit, um, I approached it at the level of my consciousness was fairly, fairly um, superficial. Like, for example, affirmations. You know, a kind of thought of as affirmations as magical statements that made things happen in the world. That was at the level of my consciousness. It's not really how they work, and which is why I'm, I'm presenting the class in a couple of weeks, a new look at affirmations, because we have to go beyond the magical thinking and the idea that saying phrases will get us somewhere. We have to understand what is happening in our consciousness when we announce phrases of truth. So getting back to our puppy training, Every time this beautiful puppy does something I don't enjoy, my knee-jerk reaction is to contract, to get a sour face, to be mad, and to yell until he complies. Exactly the opposite of what is effective and exactly the opposite of how the universe treats me. Here's what I learned. I have to be authentic, pleasant, affirming, and redirect his attention until he knows through the application of my love and excitement 
what it is I want him to do. I assumed that he was going to be all over my face today and he was going to be fighting with Cooper so I could demonstrate my new skills at having him sit and stay and leave. But I guess this is uh, what he wants to do right now. So now I have to be affirmative and redirect him to the action and activity I want. Don't you know that is effective also with my thinking, with my own mind? So I have to watch that when my mind gets dark and fast moving and hot and agitated and I start to want to create enemy images and I start to want to have justified aggression and war, especially if so many other people are doing it, especially if something atrocious is happening in the world. And in that moment, I abandon my spiritual path, which is to duplicate the nature of the divine in how I show up and talk to the world. Look, I know what it means to be activated or agitated. If somebody threatens my, my family, or somebody, let's say, God forbid, somebody hurt Kevin. Would I be so even killed and even minded? I don't know. I do know that I don't ever want to lose my connection to my spiritual life while I'm navigating through difficult situations. I do know the consequence of spreading anger. I do know, for me. So when people say to me, you know, why are you promoting peace? You're not being realistic. You should be rising up in arms or whatever it is they say to me. I understand that. I've been there. I've done that. And then I discovered the science of mind that said there is a powerful good in the universe and you can use it to better life for everybody that said that my mind is the center of divine activity within the mind and that my words and my thoughts matter. We've seen that just recently where elected officials used words that had consequences and it was a reminder for me that our words are powerful and have consequences that I can use them to heal or to harm, to build up or to tear down. And even though I may be bothered or afraid or upset or agitated by a puppy, I still get to own the emotional wake, the fallout from the way I use the creative power that is in me as a result of just being in this world. So our topic for today is grounding beyond the beginning. Now grounding it means whatever you and I do to settle into our faith tradition, our teaching, like centering, so whether that is spending time in nature, sitting quietly and meditating or doing spiritual study, whatever it is that reconnects you to your faith tradition. And then the second part of the topic, beyond the beginning, means acknowledging that where we started with our spirituality is a starting place and there is further to go. There is a deepening, there is a more mature application of whatever it is we learned in the beginning. And we're right in that today. We are one is the beginning. We can ground in that. How do I apply that today? How do I live that today? Um, there is a powerful good in the universe and we all have equal access to that's the beginning and we settle into that how do I apply that today our guest speaker on Wednesday Night Live Dr. David Alt did a beautiful job of talking about the real authentic challenges of going deeper with oneness and every first Wednesday of the month we're going to have a Wednesday Night Live guest to take us deeper also this year we have Prayers of Wisdom and Vision, a beautiful gift with a spiritual mind treatment, and that's a phrase that means affirmative prayer, for each week of the year that is topic appropriate for our purposes. And you can use it in this way for your grounding. Get yourself comfortable. See if you can get two or three puppies on your lap and then sit for a moment like we're doing right now. 
Even let your breathing become a little slower and soften your face. You might have your book close by or just listen to the words as I read them to you. And then take your time to read through the phrases in the spiritual mind treat treatment to see if you can get the meaning and the depth of feeling that goes with them, sometimes changing the words to match your own preferences. The creative spiritual substance of the universe is love. You see, a sentence like that is worth sitting with. The, substance of the universe is love. And love is forever refreshing, renewing and revitalizing all of creation. It is everywhere present as the impelling force in all life. You see, there is something. Love is everywhere present as the impelling force of all life. I can sit with that because, you know, it takes courage to make that statement, to make that claim, because the world doesn't necessarily always reflect that as a truth. It takes courage to ground in that and then figure out, how am I going to show up like that? I am created from this love and filled by it. We are created from this love and filled with it. We merge with the all that is. You know, sometimes when I'm reading a treatment like this, my mind, the trickster part of my mind, will start arguing. But what about? But what about? And it's valid. These are valid questions. But I talk to myself and say, can I put that on hold just for the moment? I can come back to that inquiry at the end of my spiritual practice. But for now, can I ground into this? accept it as much as I can, and then see if it affects the way I show up in the world and how I present myself in the world. There is nothing outside this immeasurable love. The natural byproduct of love is peace. As we love, peace simply comes to us. So, as world, national, and local events arise, I claim and accept that as we awaken and remember the love of the divine within us, peace returns. Peace comes to each heart and mind. And as each of us remembers, all of life is affected. Now, I have to think about that, you know, I've got these two dogs sleeping on my lap, and it's very unusual. And you probably, some of you will remember my cat, Andrew, who passed away. Um, he could not be controlled in any way whatsoever, unless I was sitting down to meditate or do spiritual mind treatment. And then he would be just like these two. He would come and sit on my lap. I accept for each of us the willingness to love. I accept brand new beginnings by virtue of our spiritual grounding. You see, I'm changing the words of here to suit myself. I like doing that. I claim and accept that each of us is a powerful vessel of love, producing peace for the world right now. I celebrate the joy this practice of prayer brings with gratitude, and I release this, this spiritual mind treatment, into the law which manifests it as my experience. And so it is. Thank you very much for spending time with us today. Um, Thank you for meeting my new family member. I'm going to wake him up because I want you to see. <laughs> I don't think he's agreeable to waking up. But look at the whites on his paws when he walks down the street. It looks like a flutter of white butterflies walking behind him. And look at him right now. I think we've blissed him out with spiritual mind treatment. You know, I know I'm being playful, but honestly, 
this is my expectation for the world through our spiritual mind treatment that when we ground in love and center in it and absorb it and think about it and identify with it as best as we are capable that it has a ripple effect on creation and brings peace just like the spiritual mind treatment said i look forward to speaking with you next week my blessings to you to support the work of our center with a contribution visit www.cslsr.org or send a check to 2075 occidental road Santa Rosa, California 95401, or use the donate button on Facebook. Quentin, Cooper, and I, and Kevin, and all the staff and trustees and volunteers, we thank you for being with us during Shelter in Place and for supporting your center so beautiful, beautifully. It is so moving to me to know that we share a value, the value that the center has, the place that it holds in our lives, and that we are diligently working together to stay together as a learning community, your support means the world to me. And I invite you to continue imagining with me a time after COVID, when we are together again, physically celebrating together, keep that vision alive and high, together, holding on to each other, hugging each other, celebrating together. Let that vision not dwindle into the background of your imaginings. Take some time every day with me to remember our community and how it feeds us and how we learn together. And until the time that we can be together again, I invite you to take advantage of everything that the center has to offer virtually and to stay connected with our virtual social hall and our classes and all of the free online events that have been designed for you to ground in and to continue Continue your spiritual journey. I love you very much. Good morning. I'm Alan Yeager, your webmaster and communications officer. As I update the website and put together the weekly bulletin, I know that I'm doing it for a committed community of lifelong learners. We attend services to be inspired by messages and music and we take classes and attend workshops that enable us to continually grow as spiritual practitioners. Two of our classes begin this week, Mental Equivalence, taught by Tom Nilsson, and Roots of Science of Mind with Reverend Ruth Barnhart. On our website, cslsr.org, you can click on Class Schedule under the Classes tab to see all seven of our offerings this semester and the link to online registration. As a retired elementary teacher and proud uncle and grand uncle of delightful nieces and nephews, I have always had a special place in my heart for young children. I'm really pleased to tell you about something new for 2021. It's Susan Robinson's extraordinary weekly blog for families with children of all ages. The blog is full of ideas and activities aligned with our monthly themes and weekly topics. You will find projects, games, and discussion questions, along with links to videos of music and even children's books being read aloud. On the home page of our website, under the About Us tab, click on Youth to see the blog. There's also a link to Susan's blog in the bulletin. Speaking of the bulletin, it's a complete digest of everything happening at our center, along with links to every one of them. An example is the Being and Belonging discussion group that meets today, and also next week's virtual social hall with Dr. Edward. So whether it's for services, 
classes, workshops, family resources, discussion groups, or virtual gatherings. Thank you so much for being part of our amazing spiritual community. Hi, I'm Kern Berry, founder of the Difficult Conversations Project. I'd like to briefly tell you about the Difficult Conversations Workshop and why you might want to participate. I think you'll agree that the state of our country feels increasingly divisive and chaotic. For some, it may even feel like our very democracy is at risk. The Difficult Conversations Project is rooted in the conviction that healing our country begins with healing our relationships. It's a call for all of us to reach across the divide, to build bridges made of positive encounters and increased mutual understanding. The Difficult Conversations Workshop offers valuable information and tools for those who want to be such bridge builders. The format is highly interactive, short segments of content followed by small group conversation, pair work, and personal reflection. I've led this workshop dozens of times with diverse audiences around the country, and each time the feedback has been extraordinarily positive. I'm confident you'll have a similar experience. I hope you'll join me. Thank you.
Thank you.